What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be sharing 15 unbelievable things to do on São Miguel Island in the Azores, Portugal. The Azores Islands in Portugal are one of our new favorite travel destinations and there's no question why. They're home to awe-inspiring viewpoints, natural hot springs, incredible waterfalls, and one of Europe's only tea plantations. Make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video because you're not going to want to miss number one. don't know us, I'm Kaylee. I'm David. And we run a travel and adventure blog called Made to Explore. We are passionate about activities that get you outside and off the beaten path. And we spent about three weeks in Portugal recently. Mm -hmm. And we also went to Madeira and we just made a video on it. So if you want to go to Madeira, which just, you want to go, go to Madeira, <laughs> check out the video. We did some fantastic things there. We will link that in the description below. And now let's get into San Miguel because San Miguel is one of the most diverse places we've ever been. Mm -hmm. It is such a cool island. This was our first stop when we decided to travel to Portugal as well and we were just kind of blown away. Yeah. So when you go to the Azores, there are several islands and your first big decision is going to be which island to go to. Mm -hmm. Granted, we did not go to the other islands because we didn't have time. Everything that we kind of looked into and read said like, if you can only go to one, São Miguel is a really good one to go to. Obviously, they're super beautiful places on all of the islands, but it's diverse. You've got a little bit of everything there and mm -hmm. it is absolutely stunning. If you guys are planning to travel to Portugal, we have developed a travel guide that is very useful in the trip planning process and has everything that we love about Portugal, including like all of our favorite stops on the Azores, Madeira, mainland Portugal. Yeah, it's jam packed with pretty much everything that mm -hmm. we loved about Portugal. You don't have to do any research at all and it's 58 pages long so we will link that below if you want it's an instant download too which is really nice <laughs> we've had a lot of positive feedback and reviews for it uh, people get back from their trip and they have found it very useful so yeah we're really excited to it share out. it with you we'll link it below and up in the corner here if you want to check that out let's get right into it number 15 on the list is the goriana tea plantation it is located along san miguel's north shore and it is actually one of the oldest and largest tea plantations in all of Europe. Yeah, if you want to get some good photos of this place, it's beautiful. Yeah, all and the rows the pattern, are like meticulous. Yeah, it's... yeah, it kind of reminded me of like a winery almost, except it's planted on this ridge line that overlooks the ocean. Yeah, it's super beautiful. Um, you can also go in and try the tea, but mm -hmm. we really enjoyed just walking around. You're free to roam around in between all of the rows and stuff, which is really cool. Yeah. And it's free to enter, so it's kind of nice too. Mm -hmm. Next up on the list is Ponta da Ferraria. These are some geothermal hot springs located on the west side of the island. And I know I just mentioned that the roads are all very easy to drive and tourist friendly. <laughs> the road going down to these thermal hot springs is extremely steep but once you get down the parking lot is nice and smooth but if you're driving a manual car just keep that in mind for the way back up the hot springs are worth it they are warmest at low tide and there are lifeguards on duty all the time they're also free to get to we would recommend water shoes if you have them just because the rocks are quite sharp and getting in and out can be a little bit tricky there is ropes and ladders uh, for you to hang on to and stuff and it's not that it's not safe at all it's just that it can be a little tricky mostly it's like on lava rock that mm -hmm. you're getting in so it just is a bit sharp like and with the tide and stuff it's just it's nice to have protection on your feet yeah but the hot pools are beautiful it's definitely a super unique experience i've never been able to do anything like this in my life so Number 13 on the list is the islet of Villa Franca do Campo. We're doing our best with these pronunciations. Sorry, so sorry if we mispronounce them. I'm sure you guys will let us know what we're doing in the comments. So this island is actually only located about 500 meters off of San Miguel's South Shore. It is very small, but very unique. So you can actually see it from shore. You can take boat tours to it, or you can fly a drone over there from shore, which is kind of cool. Yeah, if you have a drone, it looks great from above, especially sunset and sunrise. Definitely would recommend some drone shots of this. 
Yeah, so the really unique thing about this island is that it's got a huge crater out of the middle that you can swim and snorkel in. You can also hike up the walls on the outside. So there are tons of tour operators that run half or full day tours. You can include whale watching or dolphin watching, snorkeling. There's a lot of different ways that you can go out and see this island. <laughs> Goa de Fago is next up on our list. This is the highest crater lake on Seo Miguel, and there are plenty of viewpoints surrounding the lake that you can access with your vehicle, and there are also some hiking trails that branch off from some of these viewpoints that you can hike along. We hiked along one of them, and you just kind of get away from the crowds a little bit if there's a lot of people, and it's really beautiful just to look out over the lake. These lakes can get quite cloudy so we would definitely recommend checking online the website is called spotazores it has live web cameras set up all throughout the island that you can go on and check out since the weather is so sporadic on seo miguel you really don't know what you're getting into but if you get into something bad you can just drive for 15 minutes and it'll probably change but it is hard the higher you get in elevation uh the cloudier it tends to be so definitely look up on the live webcams and see before you visit Lagoa de Fago. Yeah, that was one of the best pieces of advice that we actually got on our trip um, to San Miguel is to check these live webcams because literally it can be pouring all day in one town and the next town over it's sunny all day. It's just yeah. really, really sporadic weather. So there's a few places like this. A few of our other places too will mention that it's really important to just check the webcams before or it's not necessary but like it just will make your trip so much more enjoyable if you can plan around the weather um just wake up see where the sun is and follow it yeah plan what we did is plan each day out and then we could move our days around so we would plan one day on the west side of the island one day on the north side of the island one day on the south side of the island and then once you arrive you don't have to like reschedule anything you can just like move your days around depending on how the weather is on that side of the island on that day Number 11 on the list is Furnace Town. So this actually, when we were driving up to the town, I got like giddy. It's the most beautiful town I've ever admired from afar. It's it is very like, picturesque. Yeah, it's in the middle of rugged, lush mountains and cliffs. All the buildings are whitewashed, which really stands out against the beautiful background. And on top of that, they have a ton of hot springs, both natural and made into resorts. So Furnace is a really, really cool place to go to a spa. A lot of people go there to stay for a few nights or you can just pop in for a few hours. There's some cool restaurants where you can get Furnace stew that's cooked in one of the hot springs. And it's also home to the Terra Nostra Gardens, which we will talk about a little bit more later. Number 10 on the list is Miradora de Ponto de Sasego. What makes this Miradora stand out from the rest of them around the island is the fact that the landscape is just stunning. There is just beautiful gardens, pathways, picnic tables, barbecue pits. So if you want to go somewhere and have a picnic, maybe stop at a grocery store, pick up some yummy foods <laughs> that you can barbecue, head down to this Miradoro with your family and hang out for an hour and cook up a delicious meal. Yeah, they've got really good views over the ocean and the mm -hmm. east coast of the island isn't full of a ton of activities. It does have a very beautiful landscape, so yes. it's definitely worth taking a road trip over there. Yeah. If you're feeling like a more chill day. Absolutely. And keep an eye out for whales because it is a good lookout for that because that's what I was excited for there. <laughs> Maybe. Kind of remind me of Hawaii actually a little bit too. Mm-hmm. Number nine on the list is the Terra Nostra Gardens and they are located in Furnace Town. So this is actually a really cool place. They have a hotel and a restaurant, but you can also just pay for a day pass and go in and soak in their very unique hot pool. Don't bring a nice bathing suit. Yes, so it's vivid shade of orange. It is actually really cool. Like at first we yeah. were a bit freaked out by it, but it's really nice. It is because <laughs> of the minerals that the water is the color that it is. And this hot spring gets super busy. Uh, we arrived there right when it opened and there was a lineup for people waiting to get in. So definitely recommend get there early. Yeah, they've also got pretty limited hours, or they did when we visited anyways. They mm -hmm. were only open from about 10.30 to 4.30, so make sure that you check that, because we actually went one day in the evening wanting to get in, and right. they were closed. The reason why they close it at 4.30 is because they want the guests that pay to use the hotel to have 
a bit more yeah, of a, that's right. a bit more of a luxurious experience, I guess you could say, since they're spending the big bucks and us peasants are not spending the big bucks. So if you do want to stay at the hotel, I actually don't even know how much it costs to stay there. It might not be that bad. So okay, so you can go in the orange pool, which is cool. It mostly came out of our bathing suits. The white liners stayed tinged for a little while, but like eventually it came out. But just don't wear like a light colored bathing suit. You can go to, they have some jacuzzi pools that are not orange, yeah. which is also They're kind of a nice- They're much smaller, a little more secluded. Yeah, yeah, nice transition. They're in the in the jungle and then you can shower and then- <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> Let's go hot spring and play. I like what you did there. So after that, you can go walk around. There's also a huge botanical garden and they've got a ton of um, different species of trees. One million. Oh, one million. <laughs> we were just discussing how many um, species of plants we thought were here. Yes. Approximately one million. There's a lot and it's really pretty to walk through. Next up on the list is Riviera dos Calderos Park. This is a park that's really easy to access. It's just off the road and the, it is quite beautiful. Honestly, there's a bunch of waterfalls that are really easy to access. One of the coolest activities that we didn't actually do, but we saw people doing and thought, hey, we should have done that. We probably should have done that. Is the fact that you can repel down waterfalls. Yes, yeah, so you can book a tour and there's actually a series of like quite large waterfalls there mm -hmm. that you can repel down and they go kind of all the way through the canyon. It's super easy to get around, it is free, and there is a restaurant and a hotel there too, I believe. Yeah, definitely worth a stop. It is on the north part of the island near the tea plantation. Number seven on our list is Furnace Lake. So this is located very close to Furnace Town. It's one of the three main lakes on Sao Miguel, and it offers some really cool things that surround the lake. One of my favorite parts of Furnace Lake is the road that goes beside it. It's the original brick road and the trees have overgrown it and the photos are just so cool that you can get along it. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. It feels like you're taking a step back in time. Like all of the other roads on the island are brand new, mm -hmm. everything is manicured and like perfect. And then you drive through there and I mean, it looks perfect and manicured too, but it's old and overgrown and it looks like mm -hmm. going back to the original roadway. There's also a really neat church at one of the ends of the lake that look out over the lake. It's beautiful. On top of that, in the main parking lot on the north side of the lake, you'll actually find a pathway to the Calderas Hot Springs. So these bubbling cauldrons are far too hot for swimming, but you can walk along the boardwalk above them and admire the different natural pools as they turn and boil. It's actually really cool to see. It's here that they make that furnace stew that we were talking about. So you can watch that being done and then you can go to Furnace Town and enjoy. City Citadez is next up on the list. It is right on Lagoa Azul. It's a really historic, picturesque little town with a beautiful church. Yeah, the Church of St. Nicholas. It's mm -hmm. got like a tree-lined walkway going up to the church. We visited in the middle of the day, like on a weekend, I think, and there was nobody around too. It was kind of like Very surreal. Cool. Yeah. So this little town is a great place to stop for, you can get some ice cream there. Um, there's a few little restaurants. We would just recommend walking the streets a little bit. You can check out Lake Azul afterwards. Number five on the list is Miradoro do Salto do Calvero. It is actually one of the most beautiful viewpoints on the island. It, it is really nice. It's on the east side of Furnace Town and you get a view over the town, the lake, all of the mountains and ridges in the island, and then also on the other side, you get views over the ocean. actually heard about this viewpoint from a local the lady that managed the hotel that we stayed at told us about this spot and it was so worth the drive yeah so glad that she told us because otherwise we would have had no idea i have no idea how it's not more popular but 
go there. You can drive right to it. We had to stop for like a herd of cows to cross the road on our way. So like, which is a pretty popular thing that happens in Salem Miguel actually <laughs> yeah, turns out. True. So watch there, out for cattle. There's a lot of cattle on the roads. Yeah, cheese. <laughs> Cheese and dairy, big thing on the island. Definitely eat the cheese there if you can. She can't. <laughs> I can't, but it looks, you, you can vouch for the cheese, it looks good. <laughs> Every morning, <laughs> cheese and croissants. Next up is Caldera Bella Hot Springs. These hot springs might be the most popular hot springs on the island or close to. Yeah. You have to book a time to go and see them. Luckily, you can do it online, which makes it super easy. There is a limit to how many people they let in, which is great because these pools would get extremely overcrowded if they just let in everybody. So be sure to book your ticket online. I think it's, is it an hour? I think it's a two hour slot that you book it for. Slot. And when we booked, it was booking like two to three days out. So mm -hmm. if you want to do this, make sure you kind of like plan it out a few days in yeah. advance or you won't get a spot. There isn't that many of them. They have different pools, which are different temperatures and they are quite small, like I think maybe 10 people per pool. Yeah. Uh, the top one has a waterfall coming into it, which is just beautiful. It is quite a bit colder. So yeah. do a little quick hop in and out of that one and then grab a spot in a nice hot one lower down. Yeah, it's definitely not like freezing. It's like a warm waterfall, which is actually mm -hmm. a really cool thing to go stand under. Yeah. But compared to the other ones, it feels kind of chilly. They have change rooms and showers on site, although there's only two or three showers from what I recall, and they were busy and hard to get into. So we just skipped the shower, went back to our hotel and showered. Number three on our list is Mosteros Beach. This is a stunning black sand beach mm -hmm. on San Miguel. So it is located on the west side of the island. Some of the things about this beach is parking is hard to find. You have to park just like in the residential area. There's no designated parking lot the black it's like a powder sand yeah, it's, it's so nice. soft to walk in it's just really nice and the backdrop from the beach is actually just a cliff wall and then out onto the ocean there's like islands that stick out it's just very unique uh, it's a very cool place to spend the day on a sunny day and the little town around it too is kind of the older whitewashed buildings there's some little shops little restaurants to dawdle around but yeah, just like go spend the afternoon there if it's nice out. Before we hit number one, number two on the list is Salto do Cabrito. This is an epic waterfall on the island of Seo Miguel. One of the first spots that we went to, we were so excited about it. One thing you should note about this waterfall and parking and driving to it is Google Maps says that you can drive right down to it, but the road is so steep. Wouldn't recommend it. It's better just to park at the top and walk down to the waterfall. There is also a catwalk that goes up and around the waterfall so you can go above it. We did it and it was kind of neat to do. Would definitely recommend hopping in, going for a swim. The water's freezing, but on a warm day, it feels so good. This one can get kind of busy. So if you want to head there when no one's there. Yeah, definitely worth going early certainly the most beautiful waterfall that we saw mm -hmm. in san miguel and honestly probably throughout a lot of portugal as well okay number, number one, one on the list of the best things to do in san miguel the suspense is killing me <laughs> what is it you want to know yeah <laughs> Number one on the list of things to do in San Miguel is to go to Miradoro de Boca do Inferno. So mm -hmm. if you type the Azores into Google, chances are this image comes out. It's only about a 1.2 kilometer hike. It's super, like, I mean, I say hike, most of it's a paved walking path. It is just absolutely stunning. It gets so busy up there. So busy, yeah. But luckily there is a pathway that goes all around the perimeter. Actually, it, sorry, it doesn't go all the way around the perimeter, because you'd have to go down, does yeah, it? Yeah, well, I think it'd be like 20 kilometers yeah. around Lake Azul. So there is like a pathway that goes around the edge, so you can hike along it and find your own little spot to take photos. There is like farmland, most of the perimeter, I believe. It's all cattle, so. Yeah, but like the mm -hmm. viewpoint is definitely worth the trip. This is a place that the tour buses hit every day around nine o'clock. So mm -hmm. if you want to beat the crowds, we showed up at 8.30. I would probably recommend getting there between 7.30 and check 8. Check the cams. Be sure to yes, check, check the, cams the cams because it's so hard to get a clear view. We ended up going here multiple times because we wanted a clear view so badly because it's so beautiful and worth and we it. We went three times. Yeah, we went three times. <laughs> yeah, just be sure to check the cams. It's worth it. Yeah, so like what we'd recommend for this one is wake up in the morning. Mm-hmm. 
if you look at the webcam and it is clear at Miradoro de Boca do Inferno, go there. Like just cancel your plans for the day and go there because it is definitely, definitely worth it. You don't need that much time. It's a super easy hike. <music> So that is our list about the best things to do on San Miguel. We had so much fun on this island and we would definitely recommend traveling there and then going to Madeira. Going to Madeira. Definitely. But also San Miguel is just stunning. The locals were so nice as yeah. well. We ran into a lot of the local people during our trip and they were all just really fun to talk to and get to know. Portugal in general, like the Portuguese people were just so, so amazing. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I really loved about the Azores is that it is super easy to get there from a lot of places in North America. It's a really good stop on your way over to Portugal or the rest of Europe. Mm -hmm. So I think we flew, I think it was a five hour flight from Toronto, um, Toronto in Canada. So if you haven't checked out our Portugal travel guide already, you definitely should. We will link it below in the description. And it has all of our best secrets hidden in there that we loved about Portugal. Yeah, you definitely do not want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate having you around here. Make sure to like this video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell button for notifications. We'll see you guys in the next one. See you next week.